Alice Traffic. I am Professor of Synthetic Biological Engineering at the University of Edinburgh. I'm also Head of the Institute of Bioengineering and Deputy Director of the UK Centre for Mammalian Synthetic Biology. But more importantly, I'm a member of the Biorobust Consortia, which is working to foster the adoption of standards in synthetic biology. This is a short video to look at the work that we've been doing looking at biological and non-biological standards for the chassis organism yeast. First, let's have a wee introduction to this chassis. I'm sure you've probably heard of yeast and you know about it being involved in making breads, beers and wines and so on. This picture is a highly magnified image of what yeast looks like. It's been coloured. Yeast is not really green, it's more of a cream colour. Yeast eats sugars and excretes two waste products, alcohol and carbon dioxide. It's these waste products that we utilise in alcoholic beverages or to make bread rise. What you might not know is that yeast is one of the unsung heroes of science. It's been used as what's called a model organism for decades, with countless studies undertaken to understand its molecular biology, its genetics and so on. The reason for this is that yeast and humans share a lot of similarities in how our biology works. Of all the animals on Earth, yeast is one that we understand as well as any other. This has also meant that yeast has become a go-to organism to be engineered for production of valuable molecules like enzymes, nutritional supplements, biofuels and so on. Let's hear from my colleague Dr Leonardo Rios Solis about his work using yeast as a chassis organism. Hello, I'm uh, Leonardo Rios and I'm the head of the Rios group at the Institute for Bioengineering from the University of Edinburgh. And uh, uh, in my group, what we do mainly is we try to develop and apply new synthetic biology and open source automation tools. What for? Because we want to find ways to produce a cheaper, for a more sustainable and a cheaper way, new medicines, for example, like anti-cancer drugs, but also new to produce biofuels in a more sustainable way, new biomaterials, uh, among other things. And also for, for example, diagnostic purpose, find the cheaper ways to, uh, for example, for, to test for COVID-19 and using synthetic biology for that. In synthetic biology, we aspire to being able to program biology by writing DNA scripts that our chassis will execute. This is analogous to writing an app that you install into your smartphone. If it's written correctly, the app will function alongside all the phone's other apps without a problem. Even better, you don't really need to know much about how the phone hardware operates to be able to write the app. So let's consider someone to whom 21st century communications technologies would be totally alien. Here's Charles Darwin, often referred to as the father of modern biology. Give him the latest smartphone gizmo and he'd struggle. Maybe he'd get some of the basic features. Maybe he'd be able to do something unusual, like make a phone call. But if we were to give Darwin a reference manual with all the rules necessary for the app writing, I'm pretty sure he'd get creative and evolve a few ideas. In this analogy, the rules captured in the manual are all standards. The programming language, iOS, is an operational standard. The apps will work on the phone as all the phones are standardised. They're made of standard components using standard connectors working at a standard voltage and all having passed quality control standards. In fact, any contemporary manufactured object will have drawn on numerous standards in its design and manufacture. When we think of standards for yeast synthetic biology, they exist to ensure that we can build our apps and that we can have them executed reliably within the yeast chassis. But biology is a lot more difficult to program. And we don't have that dummies manual, even for something as well studied as yeast. The work of BioRoboost seeks to define the standards that we have but also to find the ones that we don't have and we would like, and which of those are the most important to deliver early to empower synthetic biology as an academic discipline, but also as an industrial endeavor. And okay, in order to achieve this, we have seen that using standards, standardization is, it's critical. Why? First, first, if you want to leverage 
all the previous uh, knowledge information that's been done before if we have established you know, if standards have been established it's, it's a lot more easy to leverage and all the previous information to build upon that and also if we want to guarantee or uh, further improve the impact of our work using the right standards so that um, you know, the, the future industry, academia, public in general can, can use our work uh, in a more easier way. So that's when it's, it's critical. It's that versatility that Leo hinted at that underlies the importance of yeast. As well as the traditional uses in baking and brewing, yeast has become an extremely valuable and sustainable workhorse for applications as diverse as biofuel production and protein drug synthesis. The value of yeast-related industries in 2018 was almost a trillion dollars. This is set to grow greatly as we harness yeast for manufacture of more and more different products. Standardization is a crucial step to generate the efficiency and profitability that is essential to drive the adoption of synthetic biological applications in yeast biotechnology. So in the next couple of minutes, we're gonna see some, some videos of some of members from my group who have been, uh, you know, they were explaining some of the projects where standards have been critical from uh, DNA assembly and genome engineering uh, uh, projects to, to automation where uh, standards are critical for different protocols to characterize, uh, characterize for example, strains or, or different labware, for example, that, that we are developing. Hello, my name is Koray Madre and I'm a PhD student in the Rios Group. Here, in the bioengineering lab, we carry out several projects from molecular diagnosis to strain development by using novel synthetic biology tools. We also plan to use Opentrons, which is an open source and low cost automation platform to automate the DNA assembly process for CRISPR plasmid construction. We have also Edwin here, it's an integrated platform. It contains automated liquid handling robot and plate reader and some other devices to do more complex studies. We also characterize some locations in the yeast genome in terms of their genomic integration efficiency and gene expression rates by using green fluorescent proteins. In this microbial culture room, we have incubators and bioreactors for scaling up bioprocesses. Thanks for watching this short video about standards and their importance for synthetic biology. If we've piqued your interest, there are plenty more resources that you can find through the BioRobust website. Thanks for listening. Bye.